when we talk about object oriented programming we started with class and object and now the next most important feature is inheritance now in the real life what is inheritance so let's say if you have a lot of cars lot of property there's a possibility that you have built it or you you got it from your parents that's inheritance or maybe they got it from their parents that's multi level inheritance right or maybe your mom had a property your father had a property and now you have both the properties that's multiple inheritance now we can do the same thing in programming how do we do it it's very simple let's first of all let's create a new uh, file which is in inheritance.py okay let's write some code here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a very simple class which is a and in this class i'm going to create some functions or methods let's say which is f1 which is feature 1 or you can name anything you want and then we can, we are going to print something like uh, f1 works okay and then let's say in this particular class we got one more method here which is for f2 which prints f2 works so we got a class with two methods f1 and f2 both works and if you want to call them oh first of all these are not instance method anymore this because we are not writing self there so let's come back here and let's create the object of a and this is how you do it now once you got the object of a how many methods you can call so if i say obj1 dot so you can see we got two methods there we got f1 and f2 now of course we got other things as well if you scroll down there are so many things here we'll discuss about it from where you are getting those things but at this point we got two methods f1 and f2 and we can call any of one whichever you want to call and now let's print it or let's run this so we'll say python inheritance.py enter and you can see it says f1 works and you can call both the methods right and with a let me create one more class and i can just because it will have almost the same schema or same style so i'm going to say this is class b and this is f3 and f4 so this is f3 and f4 okay so we got two classes a and b and a got two methods b got two methods and when you create object of a you will get two methods but what if you create an object of b here can you call f1 of course not we have seen that before if you don't have a method in a class how can you call it so f1 belongs to a not b that's what you got here and it also suggest hey you're trying to call f1 but did you mean f3 no i mean f1 it's still not working so i want b to have all the methods now you have two ways one you can just copy this code and paste it here so something like this you can just copy that and paste it here so now you got four methods and with this particular change this will work but i don't want to do this i don't want to copy paste it so what other option we have so what we can do is we can use inheritance here so b inherit things from a so when you write this syntax which is b in round bracket when you say a this means b is inheriting from a so this makes a as a parent class and b as a child class and child will have all the features of the parent makes sense right so a parent got a car and a formula 1 car okay that's nice and a property b has its own properties but b will get everything from a and their own what i mean by that is you can call all these functions f1 f2 f3 and f4 it's all yours so this thing is called a single level inheritance cool we can also talk about multi level inheritance where you got one more class which is c and c is inheriting from b so as you can see b inherits from a and c inherits from b so this is multi level right grandparent parent and child now when you create oh, first of all let's have one more method here and i can just reuse it copy and paste this is let's say feature 5 and we are saying feature 5 works and in this let's create object of b let's see if b can call 5 let's run this and no it's not working even if you know that b is a parent of c unfortunately you can't call the methods of your child class so the object of is of b you're trying to call the methods of c class it's a child class you can't access it so child has access to all the methods of parents but unfortunately parents don't in programming and let not that happen in real life okay so this works and you can see oh this this is not working let me get object of c instead of b 
And let's see if that works. Now run, it works. So C can actually access all the methods. So when you say obj1 dot, you can see them options here. F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. You can call all the methods. So this is multi-level. How about multiple? So let's say we got B and now this time, observe, B is not inheriting A. So A, individual class, B, individual class, but C says I will inherit from both. Now what this makes is C can have all the features again, but then initially it was multi-level, it is now multiple. Okay, now what's the difference? The difference is when you create object of B, you can only access F3 and F4, you can't access F1 and F2. Okay, imagine this is your father, this is your mother, and uh, you can access methods from both the classes, and of course your own. So this is multiple. But when you work with multiple, we have some twist here. Let me show you what that twist is. Let's say you got a method here which is called show, okay? And even show is an instance method. And in this, what you're trying to print is very simple thing. You are printing in a show. Let me just copy this and put that in B as well. But this time we'll say this is in B show. And let's also have that method in C, which is in C show. Imagine C, a show as your mobile phone. When you want to call someone, example, let's say if I say obj1.show, it's like you're calling someone. If you have a phone with you, right? This, this is your phone. If you have a phone with you, and if you try to call someone, it works. It says in C show. That means you can call. But what if you your phone is not working? It is switched off or you lost your phone. Now question arises, whose phone you will take? Okay, uh, so when, when you don't have a function or you don't have a feature with you, you will search for that feature from your parents. Now, I have a question for you. We got show in both the classes, in A and in B. Which show it will call? I mean, indirectly, which what statement it will print? In A show or in B show? Think about it. I hope you thought about it. Let's run this. And it says in A show. Why A got preference over B? Let's say we don't have show in B. Let's see what happens. When you don't have this thing in B or in A, it will call from B. So what is happening here? See, the thing is, there's a concept of MRO, which stands for Method Resolution Order. Whenever you look for a particular method with the child class or child class object, when you call show, it will first search for it in the own class. When you don't have show, of course, if you have show, it will call it. It will not go to parents. But if you don't have show, it will first go to the first class, which you have mentioned in the order sequence, A and then B. It will go to A. It will check. Do you have show here? If you have show, it will execute this. If you don't have show here, then it will go to B. But since we have show, that's why it's saying in A show, if that makes sense. And that's why you got... Oh. I have to run this again after making changes. And that's why you got in A show. But what if you want to print in B show? In that case, you can just change the sequence. You can make it B comma A. Now, since we have written B first, let's run this and it says in B show. But let's say I don't want to change the sequence. I want to stick to this sequence here, but still I want to call the method in B. So we have one option here. You can call the show method of B from this show by uncommenting it and add some line or we can go with our old style this is your new style the old style is which we have done before use b class and call the method show but then to call show we need object as well pass the object of child class that works okay and now let's try it works so this is inheritance where we have multiple types of inheritance we got single level which where we have a and b then we got multi-level which is a b and c and then we got multiple where you got two parent as a and b and the child is c yeah and that's how inheritance works and we have also seen mro which is method resolution order where it will first check in the own class then it will go to the first parent whoever you mentioned the first year and that's it from inheritance see you in the next part